Well, welcome everyone. It's great to have you here and participating in the statewide advisory for CTEH. We do this every year. It's data that we have to collect and share for the state. So glad that you are with us today. Um, we are, oh, I keep thinking I'm, I'm switching slides here, but I'm not. <laughs> so um, my name is Elena Hernandez. I see a lot of familiar faces and names and hear some voices. So um, it's really great to see everybody and, and glad you're back with us. And um, we have, uh, I'll let my colleagues introduce themselves. And I am uh, Christopher McClung, the uh, Special Projects Coordinator for uh, CryerUp and for CTE Teach. And Kathleen Quiggle was supposed to join us today. She literally just hurt her foot like five minutes ago. Um, and so we're hoping that she is well, but I told her, I said, the webinar is not as important as your foot falling off. Tend to that front. So, uh, <laughs> so that's sure. where she will be. Uh, there's also a bit.ly that we've given you at the bottom and you are more than welcome to follow along and you will have access to these slides with the bit.ly and then at the end we will go ahead and um, upload this and give you access through CT online on the CTE teach page. So with that, we just want to give a little, a few uh, webinar norms. Please make sure that your muke is, uh, your muke, your mic is muted. I've said that so many times over the past six weeks. So please yeah. uh, make sure you mute yourself. And then if you wanna jump in or you have a question, just raise your hand or put it in the chat or unmute yourself, that's fine. And then, um, like I said, we're gonna use the chat feature. Now, Kathy was going to moderate that for us. So Chris and I are gonna do our best to pay attention to the chat, but mm -hmm. um, if not, just interrupt us and, and that's fine too. And then just be mindful of your environment what's going on behind you or around you and all that fun stuff. We'd love to see your faces on here, but we're not going to force you to do that. So with that, I think that we're going to go ahead and, and get started. And we also have the, the bit.ly. Yes. I mentioned and, the bit.ly. Yeah. And then <laughs> we, we are recording this. Correct. Sorry. Yes. We are recording this yeah. and it'll be available to you guys as well after. So, all right. We'd like to start with a little icebreaker. If you guys could go to menti.com and put in the code, which I can't see the code right now, 374147, and then answer this quick question. If you had a time traveling DeLorean, where would you go with it? And right now I'm thinking because of the time that we're in, gosh, there's a lot of other places that all of us would go. So if you would do that for just for a second, and then we're gonna bring up the answers here. Yeah. Or you get choices. Okay, there you go. Jurassic era, ancient Rome, medieval times, old west, Victorian area, era, and roaring 20s. Mm -hmm. Oh. I think people want to dance, Chris. Yes. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to put the 80s on here, but I, I, I know. <laughs> And I molded over after we had this discussion and I thought, well, I don't want to do anything where people can say, I have memories of when add in 50s, 60s, 80s. I'm like, that's not fun. It just means Hopefully nobody in here has memories of the 20s. <laughs> it just means that you're younger than I. <laughs> I was there in the 80s. I was there. Um, Chris, we need to put up the bit.ly URL again, please, if you wouldn't Absolutely. mind. In fact, I'm also going to add it in the chat. Okay. Um, and let Hold me, on. sorry, let me, I'll, I'll come back to this in just a sec here. Um, if you need the bit.ly, as soon as, there we it go. is bit.ly. Um, forward slash CTE 2019 dash 20. And I just added it to the chat as well. You forget what it's like to miss your right hand person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. So where do you guys want to go? Looks like the roaring 20s. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And I know we've used Mentimeter several times in our webinars. So this is another great engagement strategy if you guys are looking for one, a quick poll of students or teachers. 
Very cool. Awesome. Thank you, you guys, for doing that. Yeah. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to give you an overview of 1920 and all the great stuff that you guys did as districts and that helped us be C what CTE Teach is. We're going to talk about the new CTE um, online, which is the beta website. Don't get too excited. We don't have um, everything to show you, but we do have a sample of what it is um, that it's going to look like. We'll talk a little bit about our trainings and workshops our webinar topics that we delivered this past year and then get some feedback as to what you'd like to see in the future. And then we have some discussion points that we're going to be going over with you guys. So we kind of wanted to start by looking back at the year 2019 2020. And we already know it's going to be a historical year when we do look back on it years and years from now. But we wanted to share just some of the, the things that um, CT Teaches does, has done and, and what, how we've kept busy and we've kept really busy this year. Um, but overall, these are some of the numbers of what we've encountered and, and what we've done over the last year is um, we've had 15 grant participants. Um, all of you are in this webinar watching it now. We've had 32 mentor teachers. Um, you all together have mentored 128 teachers this year for a total of about 3,500 mentoring hours. Uh, we've done six advisory webinars. We've done two statewide mentor trainings, and we've had uh, five outreach workshops where we went around tell people this is what CT teaches, this is what we do. Um, we presented at three conferences, and brand new this year, we started doing our media online, and we just in from August to now, We've had 1.9 thousand views of our content on YouTube, and we have about 300 podcast listeners, which is really cool that all of that is being spread about, about CTE and what we do statewide. Awesome numbers. And as Elena promised, we wanted to show you just kind of a beta of what CTE teach, sorry, of what CT online looks like. And, um, and so it's got new, a new look, new features, some updated resources, it's supposed to have some administrator resources and be a little more user friendly. And if you've not seen it yet, here is just the beta version of it. And um, this is the website, kind of where, where they're going with it, getting some information down here as far as curriculum and tools or whatnot. But I'll go ahead and log in so you guys can see what that user page looks like. Monitoring the chat as well. And so as you can see, they kind of changed the color scheme a little bit. Um, it's more of the, the blue, the blue and the black and the orange now. And um, you can add, see your groups are here all grouped together. It's more almost functions more of like, um, like a Facebook page or, you know, so where they're kind of putting things together. Um, you have your curriculum will be up here, leadership and training, communities, career guidance or whatnot. And then CT Teach will, will be housed here as well. And we don't have all of this built out yet, but this will be the CT Teach page and, you, and you'll be able to get to the mentor modules and um, share resources or whatnot. So similar to what we have as far as functionality of the old page, um, but we're just kind of getting some of the redesigns now. And this, and this is the beta version. It's not quite finished just yet, but we just kind of wanted to share with you like this is um, where it is in, in progress right now. Look at that picture. When, when was that? Whatever. So uh, yeah, so it's so it's it looks it looks really good. I I like the color scheme. I like where they're going with it. It's still in production, um, but it's just really neat to see where we're going with with this website. So um, as we've shared at the beginning, if you want to get to this presentation through the Bitly, um, if you just click here, it'll take you right to that page. And if you already have a CTE online account, you should be able to log in and start playing around and seeing what is available on on the new website. And so as we kind of, we kind of want to give a broad stroke of everything we have uh, done this year. And so these are some of the, actually, these are the in-person workshops that we've created. Again, if you get the bit.ly, you can get to this presentation and all of these are clickable. But some of our ones that we shared, um, we did, we've talked about Pirate. We love doing Pirate, but if you click on Pirate, um, it will take you to the slide deck and you guys can get to all this information again. And we even had um, some little like baseball cards that we were giving out. If you wanted to scan that QR code, it'll take you to another page where you can print your own that has all these hooks on here. And so that was a fun training that we've done. We really enjoyed doing it. 
Um, and another one uh, is the most recent one is we did the Let's Get Down to Mentoring. We did, uh, Deidre and I did this up in Sacramento a couple months ago. And we just really went into what this uh, mentoring model is. And we did a lot of fun activities with you guys writing on the walls and um, some great artistic work came out of this workshop. And, and yeah, so these are all of our in-person workshops. And if you click on any of these, it'll take you right to those slide decks and you can, again, start downloading that information. Um, here's where we did Rio Hondo earlier this year in LA. That was, that was a lot of fun. And then these are our webinars um, that we, we have had this year. Uh, the Tech Tools one, again, if you click on it, it'll bring up all the information from that Tech Tools slide deck. If there was still some information you wanted to, to gather, it is here for you. And you can um, just go and click, see what, see what you want. Um, same thing, we did, we did a webinar on UDL versus differentiation. And then just a few weeks ago, um, the fantastic Wendy McClung presented on distance teaching and social emotional learning. And again, that's all here um, for, her, for you to view and see her stuff there. So cool resources, a lot of work, a lot of fun to do. And just, yeah, just great resources for CTE. And then our digital media, um, kind of talked about it earlier. This is the first year we, we had it and we have it all here for you. So if you wanted to see our webinars, if you click on that field trips icon there, it'll take you to our YouTube channel that has all the webinars that we presented from the year, um, including the one just a few weeks ago about the social emotional learning, um, the PD mashup that Elena and I did a few weeks ago, including all the way back to where we went out to Fresno and we or to Clovis, and we did um, the Play Like a Pirate there in person. Another one is um, all of our teacher induction programs that we have had this year at CryRop are available. If you've not had a chance to view them, if, you, if you're looking, if you're thinking about what you're going to do next year and you're starting to get teachers, brand new teachers in and you need some content, um, here is a lot of this available here. So we go into lesson planning and reflections, creating assessments and rubrics, again, going back to UDL, um, social emotional and whatnot. So, and if you click on these, um, I'll pick this one. This has the video of us actually presenting it, but in the description, these videos are time stamped, so you can jump around to what you want to get to specifically. But we also include all of the resources that we discuss and we bring into the trainings. And all you need to do, if you want to get to some of the content, if you have questions about, just click on those links, and it'll take you right to that information so and the best part as we always say is it's free 99 so good stuff free free it's free, free. Yeah. okay um we recently asked you guys to complete a survey as sct teach does every year and we asked you um, about specific things and and some of those things were the impact that uh CT Teach has had on teacher effectiveness, on teacher retention. We asked about if your ment mentees were going to return to the classroom. We asked about the effectiveness of the CT Teach model and maybe some changes that you guys um, were suggesting. We talked, we asked you about the online resources and the um, value of those. We asked for presentation ideas and the one and your thoughts on the ones that we have presented over this past year. And then we asked you about any new services you thought CT Teach should offer or make part or make available on CT Online. And then lastly, we asked about the sustainability of a teacher induction program if CT Teach was not um, part of your district. So we're going to go over all of that right now with you and show you the results and all the numbers. So the first question asked about the effect or the impact that CT Teach had on teacher effectiveness. And these were your answers. We're very happy to report that over half of you um, felt that there was a value and a true impact on teacher effectiveness um, with the things that CT Teach offers. So it's really nice that, you know, five, four, and three, I think, I think that's great. So, so thank you for your responses. We, we do look at them and, and we truly have to, um, we try to embed as many suggestions as you guys give us. So um, we think we're doing good work if, if we're having an over 50% you know, impact on, on teacher effectiveness. So that's a good thing. Fantastic. And then we asked about the, um, the impact on teacher retention. And once again, happy to report that 
42.9% of you felt that yes, there was a definite impact that CT Teach had on teacher retention. And I think that's a that's how we all started was um, that this is how this program began was with um, really keeping teachers, but also mentoring those CTE teachers, which there wasn't a lot about a lot out there for that. So um, once again, you know, five, four and three, we'll take that. A few of you thought it wasn't didn't have an impact, but that's okay. We want your honest opinion. Mm -hmm. So we asked then uh, you guys if you if the CT teach had you know what kind of effect it had in, in on your returning teachers and were they going to return and yes um, you know 73.5 percent of you guys have teachers that are going to return that's really great I think mm -hmm. um, we we all train teachers but we hope that we train them to stay and we've had some um, influxes here as well some changes here at Cryrop as well in terms of teachers leaving for bigger and better things, but it's also great to train those teachers and to keep them. So it's nice to have you guys say that, that most of them are coming back. That's great. So this was a big one. So we asked for you to rate the effectiveness of each of the following components of the CT teach model. And, and so we, you see the green and the, and the yellow slash orange is kind of the, um, is where we're hoping you guys landed, where very effective or effective. So um, I'll start from right to left, but um, social media, because we've really ramped that up this past year. Chris has been a huge pioneer in that and spearheading that whole process here at CryRop. So we see that we've made an impact there with social media. The recorded tip presentation. So anything we do here at CryRop for our own teachers on our induction program is available to you guys. And we see that you think that that's very effective. Our podcast, once again, the social media and that has, it's brand new to us, but that seems to be very effective for you guys. The modules on CTE online continue to be very effective and how you guys are utilizing them to train your teachers. Our webinars uh, rated very high, which we're very proud of. Um, Chris and Deidre have spent a lot of time this past year really, really listening to what you guys would like to hear or um, have us present and so um, those have been very well received. The mentor training hours is, is probably the, um, it's the meat of what we do and it's why CT Teach started is are you, are we providing the funds for you guys to mentor and, and yes and you guys have used those hours and, and some even wanted more and if we had them we gave them so definitely um, utilizing the mentor hours and how that is um, extremely effective for your teachers. And then you have the um, Mentor hours. So we've got mentor hours and mentor training hours. Not sure what the difference is, Chris, here, but uh, maybe you can jump in. Otherwise, I'm going to move to email and phone communications. Um, thank you for that because we, we feel that we are trying our best to be communicative with you and to stay available and responsive when you guys ever picked up the phone or, or needed our assistance. And then I think um, every, our favorite here is con, uh, the conference workshop attendance. And if you felt that those were things that were worth your time and energy, and yeah, I think we scored pretty high on that. So all of these components, thankfully, you guys rated favorably and that each of them had an, um, some sort of effect or impact on what you do for teachers. So thank you for that. We just wanted to show it to you in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how often did you access resources uploaded to CTE online? So no one's using them daily. I get it. Um, but it's nice to see that weekly and monthly, most of you are, are hitting CTE online and looking for either lesson plans or resources through CTE Teach, things that you can provide your own teachers, whether that's taking a webinar or some sort of training that you're embedding into your own induction program. So definitely you guys are, are using the modules and, and going to CT online, which is great. All right, so um, also one of the things we asked is, is we asked you what improvements do you feel can be found on the CTE Teach page of CTE Online? And we got responses from 49, um, from 49 submissions. Um, these are just some of them, but I did go through and, and I have read every single one of them, um, but obviously all 49 of them I, I wasn't able to fit here, otherwise the font would be extremely small. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to kind of highlight some of it. But again, I just want to reiterate that we did, do, we have read all of them. So um, some of the things that, that you guys pointed out was um, you felt like new modules for each pathway would be good. Um, a lot of what's present is not relevant or manageable with the current districts or school. Um, new templates, new content overall, things seem a little dated. And so again, we we're kind of uh, making CT Online aware of that. 
Um, templates and ideas for UDL and CTE lessons, ideas and discussions related to working with at-risk, SCD, SCW, and homeless foster youth. It's a great idea. Um, and creating a mentor handbook. We, Elena and I love this one. We would love to see um, a mentor handbook be, being developed uh, and then also a forum for teachers to collaborate. Again, just a really good idea as far as getting you all to, um, to, do, to talk, even though we may be doing things in different areas and doing maybe a little bit different at each time. Overall, we're all trying to achieve the same objective, which is to help uh, mentor our teachers and help them um, impact students. So great information uh, for what, what we can do with CT Online. Uh, the next question that we asked you, question seven was, what was the most interesting presentation idea specific to mentoring? Uh, the number one that everybody put was growth mindset. Uh, in addition to that, goal development, individualized learning plans. And then we left a space in there for people to submit other um, ideas that may have not been in that list. And so we had four submissions. And one of them was to uh, create an online mentoring support in time of crisis, um, uh, individualized learning plan, min uh, yet minimal yet effective, um, uh, update the tech presentation every year. A lot, got a lot of positive feedback that people like the the tech tools webinar and, and the idea was just to update that every year um, and then effective observational um, effective mentor observational models so go going more in depth into you know doing an observation and uh, and those models so got a comment in the chat that says more lessons that can be easily adapted to distance learning will be available on CT online soon that's awesome so they're working on that and I know choir Op has also submitted a lot of um, content to CT online that, that can be done for distance learning. So very cool. Thank you for sharing that, Amanda. Uh, question eight, we asked you, what is the most interesting presentation ideas specific to introduction in student engagement? I'm sorry, instruction in student engagement. And so the number one on there um, was social emotional learning. Everybody seems to really um, want more information about that and about addressing students' emotional needs and their social needs. Um, stra strategies, second was strategies for specific populations. Um, again, I think that's a really, really great idea. And then just student engagement overall. And so the kind of the theme I see in all of it is that you guys are really wanting to know more about how to mentor your teachers so that your teachers can connect specifically with students in all areas. So I think that's um, powerful information and, and great ideas. And again, we added kind of an other area for, for people to include stuff. And so some of the others were um, uh, classroom management, more on distance learning, um, how to navigate the new CT online. I think it's a great idea. Um, Amanda, maybe you, you might know more about that as well as like how once, once it's up and running, will we have a training where people can kind of navigate it and maybe we can do like some sort of how-to tutorial video or whatnot. Um, and then also something that's um, for continual COVID-19, we hope it doesn't continue, but the, the idea was just to have something there in case it does. So question nine um, was describe additional components and or services that would increase the CT Teach model. So what could we do to increase what we're already doing? Some of the ideas um, have veteran mentors to provide input on how they approach their work, challenges and successes. Um, site visits, modules for mentees to go through the, to help with accountability, I think another great idea. One-to-one um, -one is always effective in bringing new mentees together, especially if the first and second semester is crucial to answering questions and frustrations that occur early and fest through the third and fourth semesters. And again, I think it's so important, we have to remember that the first and, sem the first and second semesters, our teachers are really like a deer in headlights. They're kind of just taking it day by day. And then third and fourth, we don't want them to get to where they're not saying anything, to where they're unhappy with what it is that they're doing. So that's, a, again, a good idea. Um, and then more training in the CSTPs, fantastic. Um, and again, Amanda put, um, more lessons that can be easily adapted to distance learning will be available on CT Online soon. We are finishing them now. Um, yes, we will have screencast videos available for folks to use. So fantastic, we're already um, working on all of that. And then our last question we asked in the survey is what steps will, has your school district taken to ensure the sustainability model. So how are you going to continue the work that you've done this year in mentoring? How will that be able to continue in the years coming? 
And so some of the ideas, a lot of people said that they're um, using CTIG to help fund some of that, to help fund teachers and, and the PD. Um, others have discussed using um, professional development uh, in the summer. We have had some people say that they're building professional development um, that is available for teachers to use during collaboration time or when they're not collaborating with the district, they have collaboration times for just um, the CTE people who are on campus. And so again, a lot of um, great information about how they're going to continue to do it. And I would encourage you to, to ask questions and ask questions of each other. If you have questions um, about how you're gonna to continue to do the mentoring and you're, you're reworking your model of how it's going to, to occur, reach out to others that you, um, you are knowing and you, know, you wanna contact us and we can certainly help with that. So, all right, and so we're going to do another um, reflection, and this is going to be another Minty that's a different number than the first one, and Elena, I'll let you take it. So we want to know what your biggest challenge in mentoring this school year was. There's lots of challenges in terms of is offering support to teachers. So if you can just say in a few words what one of your challenges were, they're all gonna pop up here. Mm -hmm. We can see what everybody's thoughts are. Yeah. I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to answer that. And the number, yeah, if you, so you can go to minty.com again and then use the code 315886. So Chris, we also have some that have opted to um, type in the chat. Okay. And so getting teachers to plan effectively has been a challenge as well as loss of person-to-person -person time, which are, I don't wanna say great challenges, but they're significant challenges because I think a lot of mentors face that for sure, face those things. Yeah. Time. Time seems to be the common thread here, mm -hmm. for sure. Oh, not being in the classroom with them because of COVID, which came in the chat. Yeah, I feel you. I understand completely what that feels like, for sure. The distance between campuses, oh, that's a huge challenge. Yeah. Uh, we have something in the chat, quickly developing resources for shop classes through distance learning. So I will tell you, um, CryRop's feeling this, experiencing the same thing where we have, you know, our auto classes and our um, construction classes. Um, yeah, you know, how, how do you create lessons that students can do from home? So it's the same challenge definitely across the board. Mm -hmm. So we, we understand that one for sure. Mm -hmm. Finding time to meet with them as they are so busy. So many changes throughout the year. I think we'll, as mentors, we'll all be writing a new script for next year on you know, how to mentor through, through crisis and, and what do you do because there's definitely not a handbook. Maybe we can task Chris with that this year. <laughs> a case in case of emergency. Right. Uh, yeah. Evening out the amount of time provided to all mentees and getting coverage for observations, definitely. Because all of your mentees require mentorship differently and they all need support differently. I, I, I realized that the last few years. So that definitely um, takes time. And there might be some teachers who need more time than others. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you everyone for 
um, populating that. I think Chris has one more question. Yes. So our next one, if I can get, get it to go. Yes. Um, does anybody want to share verbally about their, their um, challenges? Does anybody, we can unmute you. Yeah. Or even share, like if you have adapted like a shop, an auto shop to uh, digital learning, what are some of the things that, that you've done? So I think it'd be cool to kind of discuss some of that. Do I have to unmute people? I think they can unmute themselves yeah. if they want to talk. Yeah. I can share uh, one of the things that came out of our CTE online institutes and working with the distance learning um, activities for shop classes and kind of my aha moment was one of the instructors said, I'm using this time to build the skills in students that I always complain that they don't have when they come to me for the shop class. So things like measuring, reading tape measures, um, those math skills, they're using that so that when they do get to get back into the shop, hopefully they have improved the student's skills in those areas. That's a great idea, I love that. That, that is great, and, and I just wanna share that uh, here at CryRap, we have a, um, we have one construction teacher um, and she's struggling with the same thing um, and she found gosh amazing resources and, and she was able to cr create like a virtual um, career fair for her construction students so although it's not in the, these particular slides um, we can we can get that shared with you because it she used hyperdocs and um, so easy to to create it does take some time but um, I'm, I'm willing to share with you because it's a great resource for any shop class and and you could tailor it and modify it to make it um, personal to your own so um, so I think our, our teachers have definitely been pushed and challenged to be creative during this time and they've really stepped up to the plate for sure yeah. definitely yeah and there's even like teaching them how to use a ruler how to measure a ruler that's a great idea yes um, I know I still struggle with that myself I'm like well what's that little line there <laughs> the third of an eighth so very cool. So our next question for you is, and should be this, you, hopefully your mentee just switched over for you. Um, but the second question is, now that we've shared some of your challenges, what are some of your greatest mentoring accomplishments you've had this year? What are, what are some of the memories or some of the moments where your teacher was worried or concerned, especially with the transition of to distance teaching and you as the mentor stepped in with your cape and got to help them, um, you know, feel better if anything. And what are some of your accomplishments? You know, Chris, we had another great point um, put into the chat about the shop classes that um, we have somebody developing and designing the skills along with um, safety and the OSHA regulations, which is such a great idea because mm -hmm. that's just across the board for all of our um, shop classes. So thank you for sharing that. Great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These who are now contributing to the veteran teachers. Yeah. And are in collaborating rather than being coached. That's cool. Screencastify. Mm -hmm. That makes Chris very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Love my tech. And and so while you guys are are writing, I'll I'll brag slash plug. Um, we did a podcast earlier in the a few months ago about using Google to collaborate with a distance. And so the way that came about is actually two of my first year teachers. This is still this is their first year teaching, and they just happen to be teaching the same subject but at different schools. Um, they hit it off so much so that one of them ended up being a groomsman in the other one's wedding a few months ago. Um, but they figured out how to end this distance teaching, um, how to use Google to collaborate. So they're, they were actually coordinating their lessons together, building um, their content together and, 
and giving each other a lot of feedback. And that's not anything that I could have planned, but it was just really neat to see how they were using this um, to collaborate, using this distance, these distance tools to collaborate. And then it spiraled off into them actually using it for distance teaching. And it was just, it was neat to see, so. Thank and you. it's neat to see two teachers who get along so well that they end up being in each other's weddings and stuff because <laughs> they didn't know each other last summer. So thank you for sharing everyone. Yeah. So having the, in the chat also, um, Anita wrote, I feel our workshops have given all our teachers new tools and confidence in their classrooms. That is great to hear. Um, we also have mentees really appreciate meetings, strategies, and sharing with other mentees um, to see how far the mentee have progressed with classroom management. Um, and then we'll just kind of ask you to unmute again. Is there anybody wants to share or brag on some of their teachers, uh, just how well they've done, you know, with, with even the transition or whatnot? Mm. I like that one that just popped up on the left. No confidence to full confidence in skills and management. That's so important for brand new teachers. It's very cool. All right. All right. Well, we will move on. So again, thank you for sharing all that. It's really important, I think, to think about our year, kind of look at how we can improve um, for next year and then think about what are the some of the great things that you that you've done this year so okay so i'm gonna escape out of here we're gonna go back all right so we wanted to share we're always looking for good stuff and you may be familiar with some of these um videos but we wanted to share a few of our favorite things and so we just chose four um, the first one is, um, if we treated teachers like pro athletes, it's the teacher draft. If you have not seen it, it is so worth your time. I promise you, just a few minutes long. Then we have Josh Ship with the um, power of one caring adult. This is the very, very small version of his um, very big talk. Um, definitely worth it to show your teachers. Um, he does the marble jar activity, and, and you need to hear what he says about that. There's also Drew Dudley, and this is um, leading with lollipops, I believe, Chris. This is, this is great. One of my favorites and, and how we are all leaders. It doesn't matter the title, but we all lead in some capacity, even if we don't recognize that we are being identified as a leader. And then probably um, one of my all-time favorites is um, Every Kid Needs a Champion by Rita Pearson. Many of you have seen this. We've probably shown it in CTE Teach. I know we've shown it in our teacher induction program, but she has since passed and um, but her message still lives on. So if you haven't had an opportunity to watch any of these, we've made it very easy for you just to click on these and um, use them for yourself or to embed into some of your workshops. So good stuff. We always like sharing good stuff. Yeah, it's a good one. All four of them. Like I said, these are our favorite things. It's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. So beg, borrow, and steal those, you guys. Mm-hmm. We can't take credit for those. <laughs> so just a reminder, a little housekeeping for you guys. Um, third quarter ended April 30th. So if you have not turned in your third quarter logs and invoices, please get those into um, Chris as soon as possible. And that leads us into fourth quarter. So those are due by July. Hey, Elena. Elena. Hey, Melissa. Hey guys, Hi, um, nice to see everyone. I'm gonna, you guys have done such a great job this afternoon and I'm gonna come in and just like ruin it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be, the, be nice. <laughs> I'm gonna be the Debbie Downer and this is, this is breaking news. I like that I'm just following the sports, you know, the sports. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, as you all know, we're, you know, we're hearing some things that aren't so pretty coming from um, the state as far as budgets and things like that. So it's getting some of the powers that be just a little nervous about, you know, money and, and budgets, not just for next year but this year and just making sure that we can account for as much money on time and even ahead of schedule um, as possible so that fourth quarter um, due date of July 15th we are unfortunately moving that up by 30 full days oh. um, and we are asking that you submit all fourth quarter logs and invoices um, to me and or Chris 
by June 15th. So my team doesn't even know about this. It's so breaking news. Um, so if you can please get those to me, um, that's Melissa underscore Dix at cryrop.org. Um, you can send them to Chris or Kathy as well, and, and I'll get to them. Um, I'm doing all the paperwork stuff since Deidre left just to help Chris out this year. Um, so we've gone through all the third quarter stuff has been submitted to our business office. I emailed, I think, four of you districts last or yesterday afternoon, missing some um, invoices. Otherwise, um, you should be seeing your third quarter payments coming to you really soon. My business office is still working in the office a couple days a week, working really hard to make sure our bills are getting paid. That includes you guys. Um, so again, please, June 15th, we know schools in the process of, you know, kind of winding down anyway. We know there's not as much mentoring getting done as we want there to be. Um, so in U.S. school ending here in the next couple of weeks, we don't think it's going to be too hard or, or a too big of an ask. We just know it is faster than usual. Um, if you have a, a huge problem being able to meet that deadline, um, just reach out to us and let us know. And um, we can have some flexibility. But again, this is not just coming from us. It's coming from um, Department of Ed um, to kind of wrap things up and kind of see where the money lies um, as they prepare for, you know, what looks to be a little bit of a rocky year next year. So sorry for the Debbie Downer. Um, news okay, report. Um, I know, but so Chris, say something funny or, or, yeah. the bang or something because now I feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what you mean. It has said June 15th the entire time. Oh, I yeah. see it there, right? Yeah. I tried to follow Key and Peel. So yeah, it's yeah. been there the whole time. It just goes to show how fast things change, um, you know, right. from day to day for us here. So, um, okay. Then June 15th it is, you guys. June 15th. Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. The so this good is news. our, oh, the good news. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll spin it with um, the good news. The grant is coming back for next year. Um, you will receive an application. And um, if you feel that you um, have a need for our, our support, definitely fill it out. We're always looking for either brand new districts who have never participated in the grant before or who districts who really have the need and are, are supporting uh, CTE teachers. So with that, um, you should be receiving an application, I would say, beginning of July. Um, Chris will be sending that out, and then we will get back to you guys with who has been selected and then funding for next year. But if you have any questions, you can email um, Chris on that, and, and he will get back to you on that. But we just wanted to put that out for you. And don't worry, we have your email because you have signed up for this webinar. So if you are on this webinar, you will receive an application. Absolutely. And, and any of the other webinars we've, you've been in, we have yes. all that info. Right. Very but tell cool. a friend if you have a, a, a neighbor or a friend in a partner, partnering district that um, has not participated, mm -hmm. um, you can also um, share this with them as well. Yep. Wish me. All right. And so um, kind of reiterate, we do have a lot of uh, media available. We really want you guys to, to share it. And I want to be able to get some of you on the podcast coming in the next school year, just to really share, especially right now, just some of the awesome things that you guys are doing all across the state. And the way you can do that is you can either reach out to me via email, or I just made a really easy bit.ly down there. Um, it's bit.ly forward slash CTE podcast. It's, it's just brings up a form that's like two questions um, and just really would love to get you guys on there. And now that we've done so much with Zoom, we know how easy it is for us to be able to connect across the state and just really share just the powerful impact that is career technical education and everything that we are doing for mentoring and teaching and, and how we're impacting the lives of students. And if you um, scan this QR code, it'll also take you straight to that, um, to that, uh, Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, it'll take you straight to that to that form as well. And so again, just a lot of great information, free information that is available for Pete, for everybody out there. And so with that being said, are there any questions um, that we can answer? Obviously, um, unfortunately, Kathy's not here at the moment, but if there's any questions we can answer, um, Elaine and I both have the chat open, or if you just want to unmute, I'm going to ask um, a question. So, so Chris, there is, there was something in, in the chat. So one of our participants would love to know how you creatively make your um, backgrounds for all of these um, presentations. And so, yes, they're, um, he does a very good job at, so they want to know if you're using a particular program or how do you come up with your backgrounds? Sure. So a, a lot of it, 
Um, I don't know. I just like this was just a black background that I put a white a white box at the bottom. Um, there, this one there was a there was a template that I stole this triangle from, and once I stole the triangle, um, I just kind of plop it in there. So I don't know. I just like the triangle. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can, but, but I will say there, are, I did include down at the bottom. Um, there are a lot of free templates available, like slides carnival is available. Um, and Elena, you might be able to think of some other ones. Um, slides go, I think is one, but there are a lot of templates out there, uh, that you can use to download some of this. Um, slides carnival is really fun. I think that's easy to use, which is what we used for here. Um, Chris yeah. is really good though at changing backgrounds and colors. And so if you guys ever just want some pointers or you want, you have a question and can you share your, yeah, please. you can share, you can use all these things, but um, he helps me a lot too with mine. So yeah, for sure. Reach out to him. I mean, this background is literally just a paper towel, um, just really magnified and something. And so I didn't mean for this to turn into like design class, but let's do it. So something that's really easy is if you go into your Google Slides, you can go to background and choose image. And then you can actually just do an image search. So if I do like paper background, um, all these will come up. Um, or if I want like a red background, uh, these things will come up. So you can just kind of click on one, click on insert. And then there you go. It's done. And I'll change it. So yeah, so so I think uh, I give a lot of credit to Google. They they do a good job at helping people um, build stuff. So. so Chris, before you move on, we did have another question in regards to kind of one um, one place, one depository where they might be able to find all resources related to uh, distance learning. And yes, um, and maybe Amanda wants to jump in, but CT Online does have a place where um, they have uploaded many, many lessons and, and resources for distance learning. So that's one aspect in mm -hmm. um, CT Teach can put up some, we use a lot from San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools. Yep. So there, yes, our inboxes always are always being flooded with um, distance learning resources lately. But yes, there are several um, repositories where um, are just distance learning resources. So I know CT Online is one of them. And then maybe we can share Chris, um, San Bernardino counties. Um, so there, yeah, so there's two things, well. two things I'll share. The first is going to be our YouTube channel. Um, Okay. And if you go here, um, everything that we do is on here. And as I, as I showed earlier, um, this is all of our webinars or whatnot. And then um, I could probably make one that's just specifically distance learning. Yeah. Because they're kind of, they're kind of mishmashed between different areas. But like the CT Teach podcast, uh, we did one that was specifically about distance learning tools. Right. Um, and we had one of our um, technology specialists come in and just showed how Google Classroom is used. But we also went into, uh, and again, this is all time stamped, but we went into um, all of these different links and websites for it. And then the one that Elena is referring to for um, San Bernardino County is here. Um, and they have just a ton of, of tools that they have. Um, and I'm trying to see their remote learning website. This is it. And I can, and I will share this out as well. Yeah. So um, SBCSS has created this um, remote learning resources page, which is really cool. It has a lot of um, tools that you Lots can use, of resources. but they have also done their own um, webinars and whatnot. And so that is all here. Um, I helped them with this one for doing web conferencing. And so this is all just great information. And when I send out this, um, I'll, I will add, I will add this to, in fact, what I'll do is as soon as we're done, I'll add another screen on here that, that has that included. I'll just put some. That'd be a great idea. Learning. I know. Um, so the chat, Krista, thank you for sharing. There is a list from Krista from Coastline. 
she has put in the chat the link to her Google Doc for distance learning resources, as well as Olivia from Beaumont. Cool. So thank you for sharing because Elena. we only get better by sharing. Yes. Elena. Yes, ma'am. Um, Amanda from CT Online again. There's, Hi there. there's also a weekly newsletter that's going out. Okay. Uh, you can sign up on the Pathways to Work listserv, and we are also archiving it within the distance learning resources on okay. our site. Um, and that includes a highlighted lesson each week. That oh, wow. Distance, learn, distance learning, and it's a collaboration between CDE, CTE Online, San Diego County, and ACTE. Okay, um, great. It also has a listing of upcoming webinars that great. are relevant as well. So that resource is out there. Fantastic. And that is, is, and that's on CTE online? Yeah, we're archiving those and they're, they come out on Thursday afternoons usually. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Right. Very cool. So check that out, you guys, on Thursdays. Yeah, and I, <laughs> so I just added to this slide deck, this screen here, which has a ton of links for um, interactive tools, um, text, uh, uh, textbooks by text experts by like Matt Miller, um, stuff for parent engagement. And the SBCSS online page that we just showed you is right here. And if you click on any of these, um, it'll take you right to them. So that is now in here. Um, hopefully, if you refresh your screen or whatnot, it's available and you guys can get, get to all of that. So Chris, it looks like Beaumont has shared a link to um, some distance learning resources on their district page as well. And then um, we yeah. had a question about, um, can we all share um, examples of things that we've done together and um, a great thing that we added to our CTE teach page this year on the mentor page is the ability for you guys to all submit um, examples of uh, PowerPoints and trainings and things like that you have done. If you get on there and you can't figure it out, um, you can also send them to Chris and he can make sure they get published on there. So yeah, I would encourage you guys to look to our mentor page for those resources as well. And then there was one more since I'm the bad guy here. Um, somebody <laughs> asked about funding for next year. Um, so, you know, nobody knows anything right now. It's what that pesky virus is going to be up to in the next couple of weeks and months. But um, we, we do anticipate, unfortunately, that there will be some funding cuts, um, but the state really does um, know the good work that we do and, and realize how much support our new CTE teachers need. So we don't have um, any inclination of the grant going away at all, but we do anticipate some cuts, which we've seen in the past. We've kind of ridden that roller coaster um, when it comes to CTE, it, in CTE teach, just like we all have in CTE. So um, we do anticipate, you know, maybe, you know, fewer districts or maybe not as much money per districts next year at this point. Um, but we have, um, again, we do anticipate being able to reach the work that we do and all our great resources and our, the support that we've been giving um, just may look a little different, but we will be back next year. That's right. And yeah. it'll be fun, exciting, all that stuff. Cool. Any other questions or comments or whatnot? I think we're good. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, um, so we're just at, we're just at the end. I wanted to close this webinar, in this, this school year out with a quote from one of my favorite people of all time. I'm a huge Fred Rogers fan. That's what I dressed up, it's who I dressed up as for Halloween. In fact, I even have a Fred Rogers cardigan right here with a trolley on it behind me. Elaine is shaking her head in shame. But his quote <laughs> is, um, teaching is such a lofty profession. Imagine giving what you have learned to somebody else. There have been people who have given me the compliment of being a teacher, and I take that as a very big compliment. So even Fred Rogers has said, you guys do amazing work, and even being associated with you is a huge compliment. So keep doing a fantastic job that you are. We're still impacting kids. We're still impacting teachers. Um, and it's a work that we, we have all done corporately together. So um, the, lastly, this is our contact information, should you need it. Um, you can feel free to email me, call me, um, and again, our, the presentation bit is at the bottom. Elaine, anything you want to say before we close? No, just thank you, you guys. Um, have a great summer, and um, Chris will be with you next year as he spearheads CT Teach, and we're excited for all the great stuff that he's going to bring, and just hold on because it's, it's going to be good stuff. So um, thank you for the opportunity. And um, it was great to see and talk to some of you. And uh, uh, we'll be back. Looking forward to seeing you guys next year. That's right.
All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. And we'll see you next year. Thank you guys. Bye everyone. Thank you. Take care.